Is God a controlling God? A lot of people say that, but just because people say it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Let's take a few minutes, dive in, and see what the Bible says about God being a controlling God. And then you can make the decision for yourself. When I was a kid, my mom would always make me make my bed. She would always make me pick up my clothes. She would always make me brush my teeth. And I say make me because as I was a kid, I was always like, mom, you're always bossing me around and making me do all this stuff. I can't wait till I can move out of my house, have my own house, then I won't have you telling me what I have to do anymore. All the things that as a child I hated my mom doing, I was so thankful when I became an adult that I had a mom who actually cared enough to teach me to do those things. But I think of this story every time I think of and hear people saying that God is a controlling God. God doesn't want to control you, but what God really wants to do is set you up to have this mature life where you can steward and have a responsible life for all the beautiful things that He has placed in your hands. When we read the Bible, we understand that God is a good God and that God has good things planned for us. And when you have a relationship with God, you then experience God is a good God and God has good things planned for you. But what happens is sometimes someone speaks into your life and causes you to question God's motivation for your life. I want to take you back to the story in Genesis 3 when Adam and Eve are in the garden and the serpent comes and talks to Eve. In Genesis 3, 5 it says, For God knows that in the day of you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So basically what the serpent's doing to Eve is he's saying, you know what? God told you that you have nothing to do with this tree, but then the serpent comes in and says, actually, God says that his plans are not that great for you because when you eat of this tree, you're gonna be just like God. But the reality of it is, we were created in the very beginning in the image and likeness of God. So here the serpent comes into Eve and he's trying to say, God doesn't want you to be like him, when in actuality we were created to be just like him. God put them in the garden to take dominion. God has created you and I to take dominion and stewardship and have that responsibility and go on to that place of maturity. But when we listen to the devil or we listen to certain people in our life and they start getting us to question God's motivation, that's where the problem starts happening. Because if we can say for certainty, God is a good God and God has good plans for me, you would never question his motivation. But it's when you start questioning his motivation that you start having these thoughts that creep into your mind that say, is God a controlling God? Is God trying to control me? When we start questioning whether or not God has good plans for us and we question God's motivation, it's then that we start creating this own plan for our life. Well, if God's plan isn't really the best plan for me, maybe I and my own self should make up a plan for my life. Now we have God's plan that we were created and intended to live out. I mean, he is our creator and he created us with a specific plan in mind. So we have this plan over here, but then when we question it, we create this plan over here that says, well, maybe my plan for my life is better than God's plan. And now we have these two plans sitting in our hands and we have to decide which one that we're going to take. When we create our own plan, we start thinking, well, this plan is definitely better for me because I thought of it, I know me better than anyone could ever know myself, so this is the better plan. And then when we say, well, God really wants us to do this, it's then we start saying, well, God's a controlling God because he has this plan and he doesn't want me to deviate from his plan. But that's not the truth. We have to understand God is so awesome. It says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. It says he thought of you from the very beginning. Before your parents even thought of you, he thought of you. And when he created you, he created you with this amazing plan that no one else can fulfill but you. That's an awesome thing thought. But when we question his motivation, we start thinking about our own plan for our life and start thinking that our plan is better than his. And what happens when we think our plan is better than his, well now we're more self-centered and self-focused and self-aware versus God-centered and God-focused and God-aware. And that's exactly what happened to Eve in the garden. When she looked at the tree, it says when she ate from the tree, she then now could determine what was good and evil. And when she did that, she saw her herself, Adam and her saw themselves and they knew that they were naked. 
Before they ate of the tree, they were not self-aware. They were made in God's image and likeness, but they were not self-aware. But the minute they partook of the fruit, they became self-aware. And I'm telling you right now, you cannot be God-aware and self-aware at the same time. The two cannot coexist. You're either going to be self-aware and self-centered, or you're gonna be God-aware and God-centered. Once Eve was convinced that her plans were better than God's, it was then that she became self-aware. In Genesis 3, 6, it says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of the fruit and ate. Before the serpent opened her eyes to this new questioning of God's motivation, the tree was just a tree in the garden. But when the serpent opened her eyes to now questioning God's motivation for her life and for um, her and Adam's life, she now saw the tree in a different life. And now all of a sudden, when she questioned God's motivation, the fruit became desirable to her and she wanted to eat of it and know what it was like to be like God. Many people think that God is controlling by even placing this tree in the garden and tempting Eve with it. But we have to remember that the tree was just a tree until she questioned God's motivation. And I wanna read you something in James. James 1, 13 to 15, it says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin when it is full grown, brings forth death. If God were controlling, he would not offer an advocate for the other side. But because he's not controlling, he offers that advocate in hopes that we will choose the amazing and beautiful plan that he has for each one of us and walk in that plan into maturity and responsibility and stewardship and dominion that he has created for each and every one of us. So just like a mom with her children, I don't expect to be forcing them to make their beds the rest of their life, but the reality of it is, is I do this and I supervise and teach them so that they can grow on to maturity and start doing this for themselves. The same way God wants to supervise us in the plan that he has for our life is he hopes that we can end up learning to do this for ourselves, go on to maturity, and in that walk of maturity with God, he can start expanding our stewardship because he he can entrust us with so much more because we've learned understanding and wisdom through this path even though we have this adversary in our life we're choosing the path that God has for us because it is good and it is wonderful and your path was created just for you so if this interests you and you want to find out more on some topics like this, controversial ones and just ones that really start picking your brain and getting your heart and your mind thinking, I would love to point you to call for the mountain Dot com. We hope to see you there.